Hello and a very warm welcome back to the Your Dog Matters podcast and video channel. Today on the second episode, I would like to talk to you all about the subject of fireworks. As I speak to you, we're coming to the end of September and of course here in the UK we have November the 5th, which is known as Guy Fawkes Day. There's just a problem in that uh, as opposed to keeping fireworks to just one day, we seem to have fireworks uh, for a lot of the autumn and winter period. We have various uh, religious festivals which take place at this time of year, and then we can get into Bonfire Night itself, otherwise known as Guy Fawkes Night, November the 5th. And then we uh, are also looking at Christmas and New Year. And uh, New Year alone seems to be another time of year where the use of fireworks is very prevalent. Personally, I think fireworks should be just kept to public displays. They should not be sold to the general public uh, because the fireworks can have a terrifying effect on not just our local uh, dogs in the area, but cats and local wildlife as well. Anyway, maybe that's a subject for another podcast on another day. Let me just come back on myself a little bit. I'm now pleased to say that you will find the Your Dog Matters podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Anchor, Breaker and Overcast possibly some others as well. I'll clarify those in future videos. You can see me, of course, uh, talking to you on video if you go to YouTube. The YouTube channel is simply youtube.com forward slash alpha dog behavior. So I look forward to seeing you there. Now, just a small request from me, and you hear this on all YouTube videos, but this goes for me as well. If you would be kind enough to like and or subscribe, I would be very uh, very grateful for that. If you can also share uh, the video or the podcast, that goes that helps go a long way as well. So I'll be grateful to you. So enough said and done. Uh, you'll be glad to know there's no adverts. Uh, this is all me coming to you live uh, at the time of recording, at least. And uh, I hope to give you some good insight today on the subject of fireworks okay now some dogs can respond very very badly to fireworks to the extent that they will uh, become extremely fearful and try to escape and panic from their immediate environment that's an extreme reaction coming down from that we have then other dogs which may just become very anxious they may be panting they may be drooling Okay, and you may see any sort of range of significant anxious behaviour from your dog. And I've drawn up here a list of eight main headings that I think you can consider in preparation for the upcoming fireworks season. Now, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, regrettably, as opposed to just having a very small localised period where we're having to manage our dog's reactions to fireworks, and I realise that many dogs aren't at all worried, but this is aimed at those of you that have dogs that are concerned about fireworks. So... The point I was going to talk about is preparation. Now, if not maybe a bit sooner, is the time to prepare your dog for the firework period. Uh, I will give you some more specific ideas at the end in terms of how I would be suggesting you build up your dog's confidence and ability to cope with those sounds um, because we often need a month or two where we're introducing uh, some desensitization ideas, okay, so the, the the actual reaction your dog has to fireworks is much less in the future. So let's jump in with number one. Number one, provide a den. Ensure that your dog can go where it likes. Now, you may be able to set up something like a, a table with your dog's bed under the table and then you could cover the top of the table and make it nice and dark and uh, you could soundproof it as well. Ideally, of course, you may well be setting up a location that your dog may want to go somewhere else. So ensure that wherever you set up the den, 
it's done in a place that your dog is happy to go to. I've had some, uh, I recall a customer said their dog wanted to go into the airing cupboard upstairs, which was a very small location, but that's okay. If that's where the dog wants to go, let's utilize that location and let's create some bedding and uh, you know provide the dog some water there and, and maybe think if we could look at creating some extra sound deadening as well. I do recall just going off at a quick tangent, a product that was put to me a couple of years ago that was a completely soundproof box um, and it had some noise cancellation technology built in. I thought actually that could be rather cool, if not expensive, but there are ideas there that you could grasp and run with, such as noise deadening, okay? So that's something for you to consider. Um, if you're able to leave any personal clothing in that uh, den, that's also something for you to think about. Now, not all dogs like to go into crates, so you may have an issue there. Um, I don't envisage you closing your dog inside a crate anyway, so leave, I, I imagine that to be left open. So we're, we're trying to give the dog options of where it wants to go, yet at the same time, we're trying to guide the dog into a place that you know where he or she is and that that behavior is as calm as it could be. Okay, so just think about locations that your dog will naturally gravitate to and then what you can do in that area uh, to make your dog as comfortable as possible. Number two, stay calm. Your own reactions to your dog's behavior can, in many instances at least, have a bearing on how your dog seems to take cues from you. So if you are, what we want to try to avoid in short is to try to fuss and reassure our dogs when they are very anxious. It's a natural thing to do because humans want to reassure, especially other humans, if they're upset or anxious about something. But when we do this with our dogs, it can potentially give the indication to our dog that we also recognize there's a problem and that uh, the, the, that you even want your dog to respond in this way. Because as you're saying, good boy or good girl, it's okay. This sort of vibe may as well be saying, yes, this is how I like you to behave, good boy, good girl, which of course we don't want the dog to perpetuate with that anxiety. So be very careful as to your own responses to any noises which you can't control outside of the house um, and just play it very low key. Ensure that you're not making a fuss of your dog when he or she is stressed, okay? There are, of course, always exceptions to the rule and if you personally feel that your dog does respond well to uh, a bit of reassurance then that is okay but as a general rule I tend not to do that. Number three, keep your pets indoors. Now that may sound rather obvious uh, but thinking about the time of day in which you're going out is um, it really needs some thought. The clocks will be changing here in due course and so we may well be coming home from work. It could be very dusk-like and it's not then unusual uh, for fireworks to be let off in your area, especially if you're in a built-up area, um, because by the very nature, very few fireworks are being let off in the day because we need the night time to you know, demonstrate that light effect. So certainly try to... Uh, walk your dog in daylight hours if at all possible uh, because that can make a big impact. Um, so that's certainly something to think about. You may need some additional help uh, so that your dog is being exercised in the day in maybe quieter locations or at least locations away from where you could expect fireworks to be taking place. So you might be using the car more, you might be driving away from walking around your local environment, especially if it's inner city and into some more rural environment. So it's just something for you to consider. If you know fireworks are being let off at a certain period uh, in your location, then certainly I would not go out. I have had stories of dogs bolting and because they are so frantic, they're just running 
they're just running. They're not running home. You would like to think they'd stay with you for reassurance, but that's not always the case when a dog is panicked. Maybe on that note, as I think about it, ensure that when you are walking your dog in public and if you know your dog to be particularly anxious around the subject of fireworks and make sure your lead and collar or harness are well fitted that your dog cannot slip them. Dog harnesses are prone to being slipped out of especially if the dog is writhing or rearing up and getting itself in a bit of a state. So consider a little coupling link they're usually about six eight inches long and that goes from the body harness onto the neck collar uh, so if the harness comes off the collar is there as your backstop so make sure that collar is really snug not too tight but snug okay so masking number four masking the sound of fireworks obviously within the home now uh, consider doing things such as putting the tv on playing some music, especially if the, your animals are left home alone. And this can really make a big difference. So closing curtains and windows, muffling the sound as much as possible is going to be a key way forward for you, okay? Um, dogs, I think, if they're used to it, can tolerate fairly high TV sound levels uh, without turning a blind eye, as many of you may well know. But if they start to sense the, the sounds of fireworks or pops and bangs in the midst of that, that can be off-putting for your dog. So think about what you can do, especially if you're not home, to mask those sounds, okay? Now, number five is um, really a bit of a, uh, an elaboration on number three, but it's, uh, again, emphasising not to walk your dogs at night. Uh, especially if fireworks are going on off in that time of uh, at that time of day rather so think about giving your dogs longer walks during the day avoid walking your dogs at night okay number six distractions okay so provide your dog with plenty of chews and toys now I'll elaborate again on this later on because this comes under the the thoughts of desensitization because actually it stands to reason that if we can desensitize our dogs to uh, those pops and bangs then actually uh, you will need to worry less about uh, masking the noise and, and to think a little bit more um, in the sense of where you're walking and when, all right? So distractions, you can uh, uh, provide them. It's very much dependent upon the dog, but you can give them what you know your dog enjoys. So this depends very much on your dog, but any sort of chews, uh, toys that they can keep distracted on. Some dogs are much, much more playful than others. Out of my three, Max and Pip, they enjoy a chew, but they're not terribly play-based. Whereas little Ruby, she loves to play, she loves to chew, she loves her toys. And so that for her will be a relatively easy um, and no-brainer in the sense that we don't have to think too much about what we're actually uh, providing her with. Number seven, stick to your routine. Uh, maintain your routine and try to keep all other routines as normal as possible. So feeding times, uh, try to keep those as regular as possible uh, because this can help reduce stress for your dog. Okay. Then number eight, we're thinking about preparing in advance. Now I'm going to dwell on this last element longer than the others because even now, I, I am presenting this podcast in the spirit of, look, if your dog suffers from this particular problem and you suffer from it as well, because if your dog suffers well, you will go through very much uh, a, a lot of anxiety as you see your dog anxious as well. So now is the time to prepare. And how do we do that? Well, I could present this to you as a bit of a recipe, as I often think in terms of recipes for certain behaviours with our dogs. So we may, to address uh, the subject of anxiety with fireworks, I, I may come up with a, a four, five, six point heading as a recipe for you to address that over time. So in this particular instance, if I'm presented with a case of dealing with uh, anxiety with a dog, 
uh, around the subject of fireworks, I would be looking to do as much as possible to desensitize the dog to those sounds. But how do you do that when the sounds are only being let off at certain times of the year and you don't really have that control? Well, that can be overcome by playing this CD. Now, on this CD, it has actually a wide range of uh, sounds. Very, we have 30 different tracks on here. Um, and the, the first eight, it ranges from firework variations, numbers one to, one to three. Then we have a professional firework display. Number five, we have not fireworks, but related, and I think it's worth doing because people in rural locations will be able to relate to this. So we have thunder and lightning, uh, more specifically to rural locations, gunfire, shotguns and crow scarers. So those are things well worth thinking about. Um, going off at a slight tangent on this CD, uh, we then have transport. So we have trains, trams, tubes, uh, planes, helicopters, hot air balloons. A few of you out there will be able to relate to your dog's behaviour around hot air balloons. Uh, motorbikes, lorries, buses, uh, emergency vehicles, okay. Then we have uh, the section of household. So under that is we have lawn mower, washing machine and vacuum cleaner. And finally, children playing, babies crying in crowds and parties. So as I say, not strictly fireworks, but the main uh, sections, numbers one to eight, you could just play those on a loop uh, or just use those only. And that's the sort of thing I would play back to back. Now, every dog is different, but when we are playing this CD to the dog, um, you need to ensure you're playing it through a decent sound system. I once uh, visited a lady and she was playing this CD on a very small and cheap little CD player, a, a CD slot at the top with a single player at the front. And the simple point I'm making here is that it was nowhere near good enough to actually replicate the sound. The dog wasn't at all bothered by that. However, when we took the CD and put it in the owner's DVD player, and you may not all know, but most DVD players will play music CDs, uh, and then it was being played out through the amplifier and the TV speakers. That is much more likely to uh, be a more accurate sound for your dog. And that is more likely to elicit your dog's anxieties around uh, the sound of fireworks. So we then need to do this in a very controlled way. Uh, I'm trying to take this sort of step by step so I don't over look anything but equally I don't want to so th th this is the sort of subject I could easily spend two or three hours on and I'm trying to convey this in 30 minutes <laughs> but you need to in the beginning play this at an absolute bare minimum volume so start at uh, number one make keep a note of each session so if your volume control has numbers use a, a rather keep a note of the number your dog could cope with volume wise. So it may be number one or two and maybe just play it for a few minutes, especially the first two or three sessions. I would treat those as getting uh, a feel for what your dog can cope with. OK, now what we want to do is to ally the sound of these fireworks with something positive for your dog. And that's where the good old fashioned classic Kong comes in. Now, this is a large Kong, as you can see next to my hand. Most medium sized dogs would be able to manage that quite well. Kongs, as you may know, come in different colours. So the red is for, uh, I classify as adult dogs, sort of average chewers. You can get pink and bluey colours. They tend to be much smaller, about half the size of this. Those are for puppies because they're much smaller and softer. Uh, we then go up to black, which is much more solid and dense for sort of maybe bull mastiff type dogs, and they can be really quite large. 
uh, and I've also become familiar with uh, some colours that they do for senior dogs and those from memory tend to be like a, a, a darker blue or a purpley colour. So just be aware of the different colours but for most dogs the medium or the large Kong Classic as I'm holding here is perfect and they can work on these Kongs without too much difficulty. Now incidentally I will be pro be providing links to Amazon for these products where you pay the regular price. I am an Amazon affiliate, so I make something like five, six percent on every product you purchase. Um, but in essence, uh, you pay exactly the same price on Amazon. OK, so that's the deal with these products, all of which uh, or rather. Yes, because I have some other products to come up, but all of these are available on Amazon. OK, so the idea is that we take the Kong and we fill it with something amazing. What do we fill it with? Well, I feed my dogs fourth glade and I personally would divert some of the dog's daily food allowance into the Kong. OK, and the nice way, the nice thing about doing it that way is that let's say, for example, your dog had a pack or maybe two packs a day of fourth glade there's nothing stopping you and if it the less food your dog has maybe the smaller you might make the kong um so if it was on a pack of fourth glade a day i would probably look at the medium size kong uh, but up to two packs a day or more i would be using the large kong as, as shown in this video and you can then have, rather than just having one Kong in a play session in the morning, let's say, you could be giving your dog three or four Kongs a day uh, where you are playing the, the sounds of the fireworks to your dog for that session. OK, so you could do some quite intensive work with this. And because we don't want to be feeding our dogs endless amounts of, for example, peanut butter or some sort of banana and fruit mash which is all healthy but we can only really give our dogs so much of this is if you have your dog on a soft food such as fourth glade it's a perfect consistency for putting in the kong and then not only are we doing our desensitization work with the, the, our dog we're also getting through the dog's daily food allowance which is a smart way of working now, if you discover your dog is particularly tenacious uh, on the Kong, you could fill the Kong with the moist food, drop it into a plastic bag and then freeze it. And so if you had maybe two or three of these Kongs, you could have one in use, one in the freezer uh, and then one in the wash, let's say. So you could be just soaking it and keeping it clean. So two or three of them is a useful idea, incidentally. So coming back to the plan, we are making some assumptions, so forgive me, but um, because I realise that not all dogs are massively food driven, uh, there are other avenues we can go down through for, for dogs in those situations. Uh, you're welcome to contact me if you find that this plan is too idealistic. But this is the plan I present to you today because for the vast majority of dogs, this is effective, but it does take time and effort. OK, so we have the Kong, we have the, the fourth glade food, we have our CD. You put the CD on extremely low volumes and you'll need to observe your dog's reaction to that volume. You then present it with a Kong, stuff with the fourth glade, and then you can allow the dog to work on that food. For the first session, just give it five minutes and then I would aim to build that up very gradually. Your dog will dictate a little the speed at which you build this up. But I would aim for something like five minutes to begin with, and then you could get into seven, eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12, 15 minutes. You see where I'm going, 17, 20, 25, 30, up to the point where you may be able to give your dog um, it's somewhat dependent on how long it takes to work on the Kong. Incidentally, there's nothing stopping you giving your dog more than one Kong per session. So there's lots of variables here. Use good common sense, think around the problem, because every case is different. 
and of course with my private customers I can discuss these individual cases but we may well not have that luxury. So up to about 30 minutes I think would be long enough for a given single session. Over each consecutive session you're, luck you're looking to increase the volume bit by bit until you would consider that volume not to be excessively loud but loud enough so you think well that's pretty similar to what my dog is experiencing to outside fireworks all right so those are the main elements uh, the main ingredients if you like the kong the cd the food to put in your kong uh, keeping a logbook of each and every session making sure that you only gradually build the volume over each session okay so that's my basic recipe for you and that has been and continues to be very effective for the vast majority of dogs and so uh, that's the, the real solution that I offer you to help begin introducing your dog to these sounds in a more calm controlled manner the beauty with the CD is that you decide when to turn it on and when to turn it off and at what volume you think your dog can manage at and so we very very gradually work our way up that ladder of volume in keeping with your dog's more relaxed uh, position that you will be able to observe if your dog can't eat the kong due to anxiety that but you know your dog is really into the kong then that in itself is a good indication that you may be going too fast it might be a particular track you might you need to be careful with so just always observe this isn't like a computer program where we can just keep uploading fresh information our dogs are of course organic creatures uh, with their own senses and sensibilities and we need to work with that we can't really force it although having said that we can sort of shivy along a bit and uh, speed up the process um as you as you see fit okay so let me just check my list here um yeah now if a kong if this classic kong isn't working and let's say your dog is on a dried food and your dog is particularly avid or particularly keen for dried food you could look at what's called a kong wobbler that is a much larger uh device with a weighted base you twist it apart, you can put your dried food in, put it back together and your dog has to push that around and it sort of wobbles over, it releases food and then self writes, it writes itself, okay? So that may be another good option for you, okay? Alternatively, if for example, you knew your dog was completely uh, devoted to a nice fresh bone then, that could be considered as well or if you knew that your dog was particularly keen on some form of dried offal or something of that nature that could work and so finally you could also look at some supplementation now two supplements I'd like you to consider one is a nutritional supplement you can only purchase this through a vet's practice but it is called NutraCalm I've had some very good feedback from this product over the last couple of years uh, if you look on NutraVet I believe it is .co.uk you should be able to see their range of products and local stockists um, I have no affiliation to NutraVet uh, but the product is a good one. A herbal calming remedy I've had good feedback from over the years is called Skullcap and Valerian. Now this product is also available on Amazon and I will place a link in the show description notes for you. So do check that out as well. It's fair to say that Skullcap and Valerian will be a lot cheaper than NutraCalm uh, but I think I would personally go for NutraCalm first and if you either can't get hold of that or feel that it's too expensive I think from memory you may be looking at a pound a day um, but it's something that you give over a time limited period so you may be looking at two or three months worth of providing that supplement so it sits alongside your practical efforts please bear in mind that any supplementation you use is not in my experience enough in itself 
to address the, the problem. You, you really need to be looking at desensitization as your primary method and then any supplementation is seen as, a, as an adjunct to your desensitizing efforts. Okay, so let's wrap it up there. I tried to keep it to half an hour, so I'm not too far over. Um, and naturally, if you have any questions on this subject, please put them to me. You can contact me directly via my website contact page, which is www.alphadogbehaviour.co.uk forward slash contact. Until my next episode, be sure to have fun with your dogs and take care. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.